There are certain verbs in Latin um, that are irregular. Some verbs that you already know, like sum, esse, fui, futurus, to be, and possum, posse, patui, to be able. They're obviously irregular in their dictionary entries. You can tell the second dictionary entry doesn't end with an R-E, and there's no real way to tell a particular conjugation that these verbs belong to. And they're irregular in some of their conjugated forms as well. But in addition to these, there are some other verbs that are very important to know. So let's start off with wolo, welle, wallowy, the word meaning to wish or to want. It's where you get words like volunteer and voluntary and volition. The key thing about this verb is that it is irregular in the present indicative and present subjunctive. In all other forms, it works just like regular third conjugation verbs. So in other words, if you wanted to say pluperfect uh, subjunctive or imperfect indicative, you're going to follow the normal rules that you would have followed for regular third conjugation. So this verb is only irregular in the present indicative and present subjunctive. So go ahead and set up your chart here with the present indicative and present subjunctive side. Of course, we've got our singular and plural columns underneath, and then here come the uh, actual Latin forms. And as you copy these, you can see that they're irregular, right? There's, there's nothing that you can drop or add from the dictionary entries, really, to get these forms. In the indicative, you have wolo, then wies, right? It's got an I in it, then wolt with a U. Then on the plural side, volumus, wultus, and volunt. So clearly irregular. Then on the present subjunctive, actually, it does seem to follow a bit of a pattern. It's just you may be saying, okay, well, where'd that E come from, right? Uh, and the I, wellim, wellis, wellit, wellimus, wellitus, wellint. As always, pause the video if you need to, and then press play when you're ready to go on. The next one is related. It's nolo, nale, nolui. And you can see and hear in those dictionary entries that that's very similar to wolo. And it's the opposite, not to wish or not to want. Uh, again, it's irregular only in the present indicative and present subjunctive. For all of its other forms, just like wolo, uh, it works like regular third conjugation. So again, you want to set up your chart, and then we'll see the Latin forms. And here in the indicative, you can really see it's irregular. You've got a combination of, of forms that are just one word and forms that are two words. So no low in the first singular, one word, but then second singular, known wies, then known wolt, and that's clearly just the negative of the forms of wolo. Then on the plural side, no lumus, back to two words, non wultus, and then no lunt. And then finally, on the present subjunctive side, we have no lim, no lis, no lit, no limus, no litus. And the joke I always make, this is what you want to see when you get your clothes out of the dryer, no lint. Ha ha, a little bit of grammar humor there. Our next verb is malo, and if you look at it, it kind of has a similar um, a similar form there uh, in the dictionary entries, malo, male, malui, meaning to prefer. It's really a combination of magus and wolo to want more, right? So if you want deep dish pizza more than you want hand-tossed, then you prefer deep dish pizza. So you can see how that's a, a, a coming from wolo. Once again, it is irregular in the present indicative and present subjunctive only, and all of its other forms uh, follow third conjugation patterns. We've got our chart set up here for the indicative and subjunctive sides, and here come the forms. Malo, mawis, mawult, and you can really see the forms of wolo in there. Malumus, mawultis, malunt, and then in the present subjunctive, malim, malis, malit, malimus, malitis, malent. 
And the, uh, the last verb that we've got to look at is very, very common. Uh, the others are common as well, but certainly Pharaoh is, is very, very common and compounds of it. Pharaoh, ferre tuli latus, to bring, to bear, or to carry. And uh, again, in, in, in the dictionary entries, you can see how irregular those forms are. Um, this one is irregular really just in the present indicative. In all other forms, including the, the present subjunctive, uh, it's going to follow the pattern of third conjugation verbs. So once again, we set up our little chart with the present indicative. And here we go. Pharaoh fares fert. And right away, you, you may feel like something's missing there. We would expect there to be a vowel between the R and the S or the R and the T. Uh, and it's just not there. So that's what makes this irregular. Uh, ferimus fertis ferunt. So these, again, are very, very important uh, words. Obviously, you can see the meanings. They're going to be very common. Uh, and you want to know those because sometimes you'll have these forms uh, in a story and it, you, you might not be able to look the word up in a dictionary and readily find it. So you want to know these irregular forms.